just broke. I don't. That's all they're gonna look at now. When I was a kid, two of the coolest things in the world were magnets and silly putty. But now I'm an adult, and I still love magnets and silly putty. Well, some guy decided to put the two together, and now we have magnetic putty. What you see in this video here is magnetic putty coming to life and climbing this rare earth magnet. I'm going to give you the quick and dirty on how and why it works. The term magnetic itself doesn't really tell us a whole lot about the properties of a material. All it really means is that some of the atoms in the material have what's called a magnetic moment. And that's a little bit too complicated for me to explain here, but don't feel too bad. Magnetism is one of the fundamental forces that scientists haven't quite gotten figured out. We can observe the behavior and write the equations to predict future behavior, but just like gravity, we aren't quite sure how or why it works the way it does. So if the term magnetic doesn't tell us much, how do we differentiate between the different types of materials? Just have to go deep enough. There are three types of magnetic material. Ferromagnetic, diamagnetic, and paramagnetic. Now, paramagnetic and diamagnetic materials are such that they don't actually give off a magnetic field, but they will react when exposed to one. So if you take something like this rare earth magnet and you put it next to a paramagnetic material, it'll show an attractive force. But whenever you remove the source, that is the rare earth magnet, the paramagnetic material goes back to being just inert. It doesn't show any magnetic properties at all. Diamagnetic is exactly the same, except that it shows a repulsive force. That's where ferromagnetism comes into play. A ferromagnetic material, most notably and dramatic, is iron. You expose it to a magnetic field, and it'll react just like a paramagnetic or diamagnetic material, but when you remove the source, the iron maintains those magnetic properties. So this putty is paramagnetic, and you expose it to a really strong rare earth magnet. And if you watch the full video, you'll see just how strong that magnet is. It causes an attractive force so great that the putty will overcome gravity just to climb towards that magnet. So how do they do this voodoo, you may ask? Well, magnetic putty has a predecessor called ferrofluid. It was invented in 1963 by a man named Steve Papel. NASA used it as a liquid rocket fuel. In the microgravity of space, they had a problem with the fuel staying at the bottom of the fuel tank. Steve Papel's answer? Magnets. So he took paramagnetic nanoparticles, injected it into the fluid, and it would react whenever you put a magnet near it. So they were able to use that to magnetically attract all of the fuel to the right part of the tank. We had some genius decide, I'm going to put this in some silly putty, and ta-da, we have magnetic putty. So I know what you're all thinking. This is a lot of information. Seems a little complicated. All I really want to know is, will it help me become Magneto? I don't really know the answer to that, but I like where your head's at. And as always, if you like what you've seen and heard, leave us some comments in the section below or visit us at facebook.com slash aggressive science. If you like these sort of videos, you can always find more at aggressivecomics.com or fightforscience.org. Are we done? Can I, can I eat now? Can I go home? That was pretty good until I screwed up. So was every other take. No, some of them weren't good from the start. <laughs> okay. But it'll keep it even after the original magnet. Mm. So close. So close.